Hello. Hey, Fish Heads, good morning. Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates at Bullshed Studios. And this morning we are going to be putting together a quick little video with some baby bullgills. And this is a pretty fun way. I've been using stencils for a long time. This is a cool way to do a really good shad pattern without any kind of mesh, any kind of hoops. Um, it's fun. I've, I've seen it done before. I've done it before. Uh, more than likely you've probably seen something similar although it's going to be completely different the way it turns out on my stuff but you've seen something to the effects of uh, this pattern from TJ Hatfield he's always been one of the most innovative people out there as well as have people like Daniel and everybody else so I got to give props because I have seen similar patterns that are uh, fairly basic um, with a stencil like this and basically, I guess you guys can see this over here in the side. We're going to be taking some black over some white on a baby bullgill. And I'm going to lay down just a little bit of black. This is just a regular opaque black over a base white. With ABS plastic, you don't really need to prime as much. And I've got my finger on the trigger here just so I can keep the pressure up. And then bring that all the way back so you have a really cool little outline here on the top but then I'm gonna flip the script and it's not gonna look like anybody else's from this point forward now I've talked about acrylic inks and micas and alcohol ink and different things like that different washes before but I really haven't sprayed anything except for I think I did a black base once with some gold and silver mica the problem with mica on its own face is that it really has a tendency to dull when you put a clear coat on it. Just like the chromes, the only thing that stands out and makes chrome is chrome. Once you throw that clear coat on it, you're really standing a chance of being um, a, a much duller or having a much duller appearance. With this Liquitex acrylic ink though, and I prefer the gold and silver, they come in a few different colors. Um, but for shad usually i'll pay attention to golds and silvers and you can pick these up at blick arts you, i think amazon's got them mr arts got them there's a whole bunch of different places that that have them and i'm working on one stand today i don't have the gopros out because we're getting ready to go to the gathering and this is the pattern the exclusive pattern that's going to be available at gathering four on saturday so i just wanted to show you what's going to happen with these and I have got a run of 12 and that's all I'm taking there's only going to be a limited amount but we're just going to come with gold with that black and we're going to put that over the top of this try not to get the tail too much you notice I've left the red on the bottom that's going to disappear once I start putting in some of the other colors and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of these just so you can kind of see what I'm doing but then we'll go off camera and just do the rest of the run I'm concentrating really on showing you one thing I've got all these painted up and the gold as you can see is super reflective off of that black base behind it you really don't get that kind of pop and, and flash when you use a white background so it's really got to be black and that's one of the things that when I saw TJ's and I see people like Daniels and, and there's a few people out there that use the stencils to start out that black base it gave me an idea so I'm like well, what if we throw some gold over that and then run different colors from there and that's exactly what we're going to do today one little quick tip on this is if you do pour too much like i did just toss it back in the cup this stuff is pretty liquid it's fairly easy to work with and generally it does not clog up in your airbrush cup if you're running about 25 to 30 psi on pressure so the next question you're going to ask yourself is what pattern you actually want this shad to be? Do you want it to be a thread fin? Do you want it to be a gizzard, a thrizzard, anything in between? Or do you just want to kind of accent colors on the edges of this gold? Um, one of the things that I like to do is use a moss green to start out with. And this is the Wicked Detail Moss Green. Make sure your paint cup is clean. And then just kind of randomly add just a little bit of green. You can run it over the gold, no problem. And the more random you get this, I've found the more cool it looks. 
when you're finished with this pattern. I'm going to do this on a couple of these and then we'll do the same thing that we've been doing and just run down the rest of the run off camera so you don't have to watch me do this 12 times. So again, the more random the pattern, the easier it is to kind of blend everything together and make it mesh just like one even though we're really not using mesh. That's sort of a pun but not really. Um, one of the things that I would say that if you do use alcohol ink, especially metallics, you need to, number one, clean your paint cup with alcohol afterwards. Number two, if you have any acrylic bases on there, make sure they're completely dry before you apply any kind of alcohol ink like this Pixies. This is pretty inexpensive. It comes in a six pack. You can get all different kinds of colors, but there's limited availability with the metallics. I like metallics because they're very flashy. We are going to add just a little bit of this blue into the mix here and you can already see probably in the camera how shiny this stuff really is. Uh, the metallics work very well and they do go a long way as far as blendability. That hiss means that I probably have something clogging right through here. I do need to clean it. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen in this video. So you guys are welcome to drop a comment on how annoying that sound is below. I welcome those things. Just kind of feather that in. And then we've got just, a, just enough blue to make that look really, really cool. Well, we're going to add some browns back in here and then a really cool purple finished with all my blues and now I'm loading some Pixies Amethyst. This is their purple metallic. It's also a really good color. It's a showstopper and we're going to add that sort of in a line here along the base right underneath where the gold is and we're going to do that on all of them. I'm going to try and click that off so that you're not hearing that hiss throughout the entire video. I know, it's, I've been spraying like mad lately, so there's a lot of buildup and garbage that otherwise would not be in my, my airbrush right now, so bear with me. But just to give you an idea of how this is looking, we're now starting to see a little bit more consistency to the pattern. Go ahead and shoot the rest of those off camera for you. The next alcohol ink I've got loaded in is Garnet. It's a reddish pink color. It's more red orange than I would say pink, but against this white background and a little bit of purple behind it, it is going to look pink. And the only thing we're going to do is accent the red that I've already left on the belly. I want that red kill dot there. I know a lot of people don't like bloody patterns, but as a fish gets stressed out, there is a little bit of flush that happens in the throat and the belly area of the fish. So we're just going to feather some of this in on the belly. One of the reasons that I left that red in there from the pattern. Also, I like to do not like a real opaque base coat if there's a lot of holographic stuff on that. And this bait was the ruby gill. A lot of times I will start with a stock color. Uh, cool thing I like about the ruby gill for this pattern, for turning it into a shad, is that you can see some of the scaling in this fish, which is super cool. You want just those small scales in there. So, now we've got that going on. Let me go ahead and finish that up off camera. So, on this next step, and I use this next step every time I do a shad like this. Actually, let me, this one's kind of already in frame. So you can still see a silhouette of the black base that we did at the beginning of this video. But now I've got some super, super shiny. It's almost chrome, but not really. It's a silver metallic alcohol ink. And I'm just gonna drop this back down, but I'm gonna drop it below just a little bit where it was last time. And we're gonna do some just pops of silver in here. I don't know if you understand depth, but one of the things that silver does to a darker background is it now gives this some really cool depth because you can see the color underneath that, you can see the silver, 
and it almost looks like it scales the way when a fish is moving through the water you've got that pearlescence so we'll do the same thing with the other side and again you want to be able to visibly see your line and shoot underneath of that So that you can see the distinction and you see how that that's now starting to look a little pearl up there where we've shot that silver that's what you want to go for you want to be able to visibly see the colors underneath but you also want to be able to see that silver pearl essence so here's where we are in this process that silver really makes this pattern come to life. So does the randomization of the other metallics on this fish. So there's a couple more things that I want to do to this. Um, there's a couple things that we could accentuate that I'm not going to because it would look like everybody else's. So I am not going to define the face. But what I am going to do is add that shad dot back in. When we bring the shad dot back in, there's a couple of ways we could do it. Number one, you guys are probably saying, Jen, you did this on a gill pattern. There's an ear flap there. Why did you do it? Number one, the bull gill is a little bit heavier than the bull shad, and it drops a little bit further down in the water column. So if you want a shad pattern that's just on a, on a deeper running bait, this is the one you want to do that on. Um, so we could either put the shad dot on the ear flap to conceal the ear flap, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to put it in the normal spot. But don't be a cookie cutter like everybody else. So most of the times when you see a shad dot, it's like round or oval. Find your stencil. This is um, this is an art tools or an art tool, which however you want to pronounce that, and find something that's a little bit more random. Like I'm going to be using this one right here. You have to be very careful not to overspray. So turn your PSI down to about 10 and then just shoot through this middle piece here. And it's going to be a random dot. You could probably get away with doing this. It's a little bit more secluded. There's not as much around there. Um, but I just want a random something that not everybody else has shad dot. So technically this wouldn't be bad either. But I kind of like to line up to make it even, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, so we are going to go ahead and use this middle one right over top of my thumb. So we have a defined area here, and we're going to lay it just over top of the ear flap, just to where we can get a good seal. I hope you guys can see this on camera. now you have something that doesn't look like everybody else's ear flap looks more like an actual shad dot would look like now we've used this side for this we're going to flip it over so we have a mirror image on the other side of the shad and we're going to do the same thing make sure your pressure is very very low and just lay that in and there you go last part of this journey if you guys have uh, one of these little micro dot stencils from brian best over at anarchy model uk um, this one's pretty jacked up you can see that there's a lot of stuff that's been filled in i've used this solid for about three years but what i like about it and why i still use it is that if you look at the uh, the cheek of a shad there's a lot of randomized dots on there and if you're real careful can just lay some dots down on the gill plate when you bring that up it looks pretty natural very light very randomized don't need a whole lot just need for it to look like a shad just a little bit now we need to find some cool eyes for this guy and we are set this is the shimmer shad on a baby bullgill limited amount 12 i'm only taking 12 of these to the gathering that's it just 12. we'll see you there